Earlier this year, I led the Voyager project, and there's no game better than Minecraft for the infinite creative things it supports. Minecraft has 140 million active players, and Minecraft is so insanely popular because it's open-ended. It does not have a fixed storyline for you to follow, and you can do whatever your heart desires in the game. And when we set Voyager free in Minecraft, we see that it's able to play the game for hours on end without any human intervention. The video here shows snippets from a single episode of Voyager, where it just keeps going. It can explore the terrains, mine all kinds of materials, fight monsters, craft hundreds of recipes, and unlock an ever-expanding tree of skills. Voyager is able to not only master, but also discover new skills along the way. And we did not pre-program any of this. It's all Voyager's idea. And this, what you see here, is what we call lifelong learning, where an agent is forever curious and forever pursuing new adventures. Compared to AlphaGo, Voyager scales up massively on the number of things it can do, but still controls only one body in Minecraft. So the question is, can we have an algorithm that works across many different bodies? enters Metamorph. It is an initiative I co-developed at Stanford. We created a foundation model that can control not just one, but thousands of robots with very different arm and leg configurations. We show that Metamorph is able to control thousands of robots to go upstairs, cross difficult terrains, and avoid obstacles. Compared to Voyager, Metamorph takes a big stride towards multi-body control. And now, let's take everything one level further and transfer the skills and embodiments across realities. Enters Isaac Sim, NVIDIA's simulation effort. The biggest strength of Isaac Sim is to accelerate physics simulation to a thousand x faster than real time. For example, this character here learns some impressive martial arts by going through 10 years of intense training in only three days of simulation time. So it's very much like the virtual sparring dojo in the movie Matrix. And what's more, Isaac Sim can procedurally generate worlds with infinite variations so that no two look the same. If an agent is able to master 10,000 simulations, then it may very well just generalize to our real physical world, which is simply the 10,000 and first reality. As we progress through this map, we will eventually get to the upper right corner, which is a single agent that generalizes across all three axes. And that is the foundation agent. And we train it by simply scaling it up massively across lots and lots of realities. I believe in a future where everything that moves will eventually be autonomous. And one day, we will realize that all the AI agents across WALL-E, Star Wars, Ready Player One, no matter if they are in the physical or virtual spaces, will all just be different prompts to the same foundation agent. And that, my friends, will be the next grand challenge in our quest for AI. So this is Dr. Jim Fan, and outside of OpenAI, he's probably one of my favorite AI researchers. Recently, he posted this announcement that his TED Talk is finally live. He proposed the recipe for the foundation agent, one model to rule them all, if you will, a single model that learns how to act in different worlds. Now, LLMs scales across lots and lots of texts. Foundation agent scales across lots and lots of realities. It is able to master 10,000 diverse simulated realities. It may very well generalize to our physical world, which you can think of as simply the 10,001st reality. I did not know this, but TED Talks do not have teleprompters. All he had is a confidence monitor at his feet, showing the current slide and timer. I gotta say, he did a phenomenal job. Congratulations to him, and I'm very excited about seeing more. I recommend everyone checks out the full talk at TED.com. I'll link it in the show notes below because he goes into a lot more depth about what he's proposing. 
Now, Dr. Jim Fan was one of the people behind Voyager, the open-ended embodied agent with large language models. That's him right there, Dr. Lingxi Jim Fan. He's one of the senior AI researchers over there at NVIDIA. The really impressive thing about Voyager was that it was able to learn continuously. As you can see here, a lot of these other ones, including AutoGPT, eventually they plateau, they, they stop learning, they don't progress. In fact, even Voyager without its skill library plateaus at some point. It stops improving. The full architecture Voyager keeps going and going and going and going. You get it. It's a lifelong learner. It has an automatic curriculum where it learns skills. It writes code that executes those skills. The code is basically the skill. It tests it out in the environment to see if it works the self-verification and adds that skill to the skill library. Now, if you want to see this in detail, I did a video. I'll link that in the show notes. This was one of the first big AI research studies that kind of blew my mind and, and opened me up to what was possible. I had no idea that GPT-4 just out of the box could do all of this, much less without vision. Since then, the same team dropped another massive bombshell. By the way, a lot of them are at NVIDIA. This was sort of the NVIDIA's research arm. They taught a robot how to spin a pencil in its fingers like this, something that was before considered near impossible. But how they did it was even more interesting. Here's that paper. Eureka, human level reward design via coding large language models. Again, they use GPT-4 here. GPT-4 codes what's called reward models for various robots that are simulated in Isaac Jim. NVIDIA's simulation for robot. The code is tested out, it's ran through in the Isaac Jim, and then the results are given back to the GPT-4 with feedback. It looks at it, tries again, and this keeps going in circles as GPT-4 tries to improve on its ability to write code that gets these simulated robots to do various functions. Again, you can see the full video that goes into details about how it did, but the main point I think is it did very, very well. A++++. plus plus plus. It was better at writing reward code for robots than human experts were. It came up with novel solutions, new, never-before-seen solutions that humans didn't even think of. And finally, Dr. Jim Fan, towards the end of the lecture, was talking about how that can translate to foundation agents. Agents that are basically able to do anything in any world, regardless of physics or complexity or friction or whether it's a digital world or the real world, our world. They go into a simulation. They learn how to do that. The time runs very, very fast in that simulation. Years pass very quickly. And millions of these robots work very, very hard in the simulation to figure out how to do stuff. When they do it right, they get rewards plus one little robot. And when that sort of neural network, the AI brain, is then taken out of the simulation and put into an actual physical robot, well, it retains all those skills. It's still really, really good at doing the things that it was supposed to do. So the simulation learning translates really well into real life physical scenarios. Now, NVIDIA isn't the only one that is seeing these results. Google DeepMind, of course, has seen a lot of similar results. We're seeing the same thing from OpenAI and some of their earlier research. So this is the next generation of how robotics will be trained in these time compression chambers where time runs very, very fast and all they do is train, which does that remind you of something? I feel like we've heard this idea somewhere before. Ah, yes, the hyperbolic time chamber from Dragon Ball Z, a cartoon out of the 90s. The characters will go into this hyperbolic time chamber, spend a very long time there and come out fully trained and ready to rock and roll. One reason why this is important is that it's important to understand that NVIDIA isn't just this chip company. It doesn't just make graphic chips for computers so you can play games really, really fast at eye-watering resolutions. It is also a world leader in AI research. It's getting really good at simulating factories, robots, physics, constructing those robots in those simulated realities and testing them out. And those realities function very, very similarly to how our base reality functions, the reality in which we live in. But the more and more simulations we build, 
the deeper and deeper it goes, the more and more you have to ask yourself the question, is this indeed the base reality? Or are we just little automatons running in here, learning new skills, figuring out how to do stuff for the benefits of the people above us in the real base reality? Who are probably wondering if their reality is the base reality. All right, I'll just leave it right there. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.